Hello, um, today it's time for our prayer time. I am Becky Brown, Associate Pastor here at First United Methodist Church of Waynesville, and I'm glad that you have joined me for this prayer time together. Um, we will be sharing in a brief devotion, and then I'll be sharing prayer concerns, um, and we'll having prayer time together. Um, so I did want to read from one of the um, lectionary texts for this week. It's from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 10 through 18. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement and that there be no divisions among you, because, but that you be, be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied by its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. When I looked at the lectionary texts for this coming Sunday, um, I read this through and I kind of chuckled to myself. There are times that you read Paul and um, you have a different reaction perhaps, but um, for me this, this today, or when I was reading this earlier today, um, it made me laugh because of the, the realness of it. You know, of course, this is uh, a letter sent to the church in Corinth and, and um, you know, mentions people by name within the letter. Um, well, I heard that this rumor is going on. Um, and, um, and then just the frankness he has been saying, well, I only baptized this person and that person, and I'm glad I didn't baptize them, or, <laughs> um, well, I don't think I baptized anybody else. So this is kind of like questioning himself as, well, I think the only, these are the only three groupings of people that I baptized. You know, I could be wrong. <laughs> but um, anyway, it's just an interesting human look into, into the church in general, into leadership in the church, and I identify with that, being a person um, as a leader in a church. Um, so thinking about this, though, that the material is difficult. Um, there is di there is a division in the in the church. Um, people are um, having disagreements about how to preach the gospel, how to understand um, the the call of the church, to understand the message that they're supposed to be preaching. And of course, remember that these group of folks, you know, they don't have the scriptures to look back on. They don't. The gospels haven't been written. You know, they're they are going off of um, oral tradition. They're going off of, of, of recommendations of teachers they respect and trust, and also, of course, ultimately going off of um, the power and the strength of God and the Holy Spirit um, and their, their memory of Jesus. So we think about um, this conversation about divisions. You know, Paul is saying, well, I've heard that there's disagreements and people have said, well, I side with this human being or I side with that human being. And, and you know, I, there, of course, there is an elephant in the room in this conversation, um, especially in the context of our United Methodist Church. Um, and especially right now, as there's a lot of conversation about divisions and difference in thought, and I'm with this side or I'm with that side. Um, and uh, the line that uh, the, in the passage in First Corinthians that made me pause, pause the most was um, when he said, let's see. Let's see. Basically, we were supposed to be one. But the question is, um, uh, when we think about Christ being divided, it says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? 
Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? Um, so, you know, that's a very interesting question. Has Christ been divided? You know, there's a lot of things that divide us, but has Christ been divided? No. <laughs> um, you know, has, um, have people been baptized in the name of other human beings, even though there might be leaders and influential and very important leaders in the church? Are they baptized in their name? No. Um, you know, it's easy to have arguments, especially when you have strong feelings and opinions. And um, it's easy to say, well, I'm on their side, or I'm on this side, or I'm on this group's side versus that group's side. Um, but, you know, it makes me wonder, you know, are we on Christ's side? Um, are we remembering that we are baptized in Jesus' name, um, not in the name of a denomination or a group? hoping to be a denomination. Um, so it was a humbling read this morning um, as I was thinking that through and um, the importance of remembering how we are baptized and why we are baptized and what our charge is to proclaim the gospel and who we are proclaiming the gospel in the name of, of course, in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, so it just was one of those things. And maybe as I read it, you're thinking about something completely different. And that's the beauty of the power of the Holy Spirit and the way that God moves us um, in spite of ourselves. And, and also um, a way that God is, is genuinely seeking us out um, in the scriptures and how they are a living part of who we are and who God is. So on to our prayer concerns for today. We want to be um, in prayer for the people who've been in and out of the hospital or in the hospital now. We pray for George Thompson, who's at Winston-Salem, who is out of the cardiac ICU, um, and, uh, but is still in the hospital, and um, been communicating with their daughter, Stephanie. Um, and she's asked that um, we not call her mother or father to check in, um, but to send them cards. Um, they're inundated with, with uh, contacts, which is a wonderful thing in many ways, but also overwhelming when there's a lot um, of, of things going on in their lives. So um, we have an address for Stephanie, and that's where she has asked that you send cards to, um, and you can call the church office um, to get that address. Melody Kirkpatrick, one of our youth, um, went back into the hospital last week um, with complications with her appendectomy. And she's home recovering now, so we're grateful she is out of the hospital and really hoping to get back into school soon. Prayers for Chip Killian, who's recovering from his hip, hip replacement surgery. Joe Smiley had a, had a knee surgery um, earlier this week, and so we pray for his recovery. Kara Williford had a hip replacement last Friday, and she's recovering at home well. And Penny Poor will have knee replacement surgery on February 2nd. Um, she's going to be, she's in Missouri with her husband, Mike, where he is um, helping in the hospital situation, and um, she'll be having it there. So we lift her up in prayers. We also pray for Catherine Young, who's in hospice care at Arrowhead Cove. And we also lift up the family of Jed Tate. Um, his stepfather died um, a little over a week ago, and so we lift him up in prayer. There are several funerals that um, are coming up of people that we've loved very much, and um, so we are, would like for you to have them on your calendar um, to support them either in presence or prayer. Um, Lillian Coffee ser um, service will be on at 3 o'clock in the sanctuary this week, this Sunday, January 22nd, with a reception following in the faith classroom. Kathy McNeil's service will be 11 o'clock here in the sanctuary on January the 28th um, on a Saturday. And Dwight Oatman's service will be on Saturday, February the 18th, here in the sanctuary at 2 o'clock. There are many family members and friends um, that we pray for, and we lift up Rick Honeycutt, Chris Kirkendall's father, Phil Hocott's daughter, Jennifer. Um, Ted also asks for prayers for his mother, Hilda, who's 97 and not doing well, and health, her health is failing. We pray for Elise McSwain's sister, Carol, in hospice care, for Donna Wilkins' son, Ross, at autumn care, for Ashley Calhoun's wife, Paula, who's homebound and bedridden, for Teresa Courtney's grandson, Cameron, and her aunt, Helen, 
for Sandy Forrest, who's Charles and Jenny Matlack's daughter, for Alex Medford, our Alex, who continues to recover from her shoulder surgery and has begun physical therapy. We pray for Peggy Melville's brother, Nelson, who's still awaiting tests to investigate a mass that was found. For Kathy Claycamp's sister, Jane, who's been in the hospital with lung issues and an infection. For her husband, Greg's sister, who's in a care facility healing from a broken ankle. For Jean Lipscomb's niece, Callie, she's had pneumonia and is doing better, but is back at her care facility. And for Jody's son, Josh, who has COVID and their 20 month old grandson also has it. And his name is Silas. We lift up prayer concerns for those who have been encountering cancer treatments as well. And so we'll list them all by name. Brenda Griswold, Nancy Ray, Anne Dismuke, Stephen, Robert Clauser, Mary Arbaugh, Artura Suarez, Ted Neighbor, Christopher Holt, Reed Taylor, Dorothy Richardson, Scott, Mike, Irene Noland, Colton Jenkins, Barbara Malden's sister, Sherry Pittman, Ricky Pollard, Pat Marone, Cindy Hart, Dan at Southern, Daryl, Joe, Lolly Hoover, Kyle Thompson, Mike Treadway, Luba, Sandy Brady, and Jeff Bennington. So please join me in prayer together. God, we're grateful for this time together to share our prayer concerns and to consider your holy scriptures. God, we know that there are many things to be divided about. There are many arguments that go on, especially in the life of church. For the church is so important to so many of us, which is why we have dedicated so much of our lives to being members and to, and to be living in ministry together. And just as wonderful as the church can be, it can also be a place of challenge where disagreements happen and hearts are broken, damage is done, people have harmed one another. We pray that in those moments we might find a way to seek forgiveness, that we might find a way for repair and reconciliation. And that ultimately that we are we are remembering what we're fighting about and what we're fighting for oh god we ask that we would continue to remember that this is the church of jesus christ that this message that we proclaim is the gospel message because of jesus and sometimes we might forget that or at least put that on a back burner when we think about all the ways in which um, we wish the church would live into the calling that we consider the most important and so god might we continue to be faithful and to remember where our baptism lies and who we are baptized um, by, and that our salvation comes from you, O oh God, not from any human being that we might respect and care for. So God, we ask for prayers for the concerns of our church, for those that we've mentioned today, for those who've been in and out of the hospital and those who remain, for those who are anticipating a surgery and those who are recovering from them, for those whose hearts are broken because of relationships that struggle, for those who continue to seek you and direction in their lives as they wonder what will come next for them. We pray for those who continue to receive treatment and those who care for them and all the other many ways in which we reach out to you for grace and guidance and mercy. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray today. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thanks for joining me for our time today, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care and God bless you.